Hey, welcome to Science Alumni Days 2020. You're not here. So things are gonna look a little bit different this year. My name is Mr. Anacle. I coordinate the event every year. And I just wanna say, first of all, to, to all you kids that have been learning remotely this year, we appreciate your efforts. I know it's hard. Um, it's, it's not as easy to learn that way properly. You're not with your friends as much as you'd like to be. It's been a tough year for everyone. And thanks for what you're doing to help keep your education going as strongly as it is. And obviously, everything this year is a little bit different, and Science Alumni Day is going to be as well. Uh, I'm not gonna say that it has anything to do with the fact that it's the 13th year of Science Alumni Day, but it is what it is. And uh, before we introduce the alumni who'll be speaking with you today, I wanna talk a little bit about STEM in general and how it's helped us through this incredible 2020 year that we've had. Uh, if you uh, haven't heard the acronym before, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. And the combination of all four of those have been a very important part in our ability to navigate this historic global pandemic. Let's go through it letter by letter. S for science, that's a pretty easy one. Um, I'll lump in the medical professionals in there as well. These are people that are using the science. Uh, they are trying to figure out how the virus works. They are trying to treat the virus. Um, all the doctors, all the nurses, the respiratory technicians, the virologists, um, you know, the list goes on and on and on and on in terms of all the scientists that have been involved in this. Even the scientists who study when you sneeze, how far the droplets travel. That's an extraordinarily important piece of information nowadays. So all these scientists bringing their own specialties together to help us understand better the circumstances that we're in. Because if we understand things better, we can respond to them more intelligently and more effectively. Next up, T for technology. I don't know about you, but uh, this 2020 would have been a lot worse than it was without the technology we had at our disposal. Uh, myself as a teacher, the ability to teach remotely uh, wireless devices, Zoom, the Promethean boards, um, all of those things made it at least a little more practical for, for teachers and all sorts of people to go about doing their jobs in some semblance of the way we used to do it. Um, had this happened 20 years ago, we would have had a much tougher time maintaining a lot of the things that we're able to maintain right now. And those are all just the serious stuff. There's a lot of aspects of technology that have just made 2020 more bearable. Um, you know, computer games, Fortnite, Call of Duty, uh, Overcooked, whatever you want to say. All these pieces of technology that still help us stay connected even though we're far apart. E even Netflix, Netflix, all right? That, that, Netflix deserves like a Nobel Prize this year for helping us get through 2020, I gotta say that. So technology, extremely important. E for engineering. Engineers look at problems, and then they try to figure out how to fix them. So there have been a lot of problems in 2020, uh, from engineers trying to figure out how to make cheaper ventilators, uh, engineers trying to design packaging that's gonna keep the vaccine safe under the extreme conditions that some of them need to be transported in. Uh, even aspects of engineering that we don't think of, we think of engineers as always having to build physical things, but they can build processes. And this process of getting a vaccine delivered globally, often under very challenging circumstances, has a lot of engineers putting in a lot of hours trying to figure out how they're gonna make that happen. Even the engineers right now who are trying to figure out uh, logistical delivery patterns to try to get um, holiday presents to everyone on time. Tons of engineers working in front of and behind the scenes to try to keep things going. And M for mathematics, mathematics, uh, mathematicians, again, take a look at data, try to make sense of it. So we've got a lot of statisticians who are taking a look at trends, trying to figure out what's happening, trying to see what's gonna happen next. When we have uh, governments and organizations that look at the data and the trends predicted by statisticians, we can make better and more intelligent decisions about where we put precious resources. You know, uh, predictions made in the spring about the summer or in the summer about the fall helped organizations who paid attention to them get more prepared for what was coming next. 
So you put all those together, you put the S, the T, the E, and the M all together, you have an amazing set of professionals who helped us get through this year better than we might have otherwise. And a lot of those individuals, when they were learning science back in their classrooms, when they were taking their majors in college or community college, didn't realize where they were gonna be right now, didn't realize the effect that their education was gonna have, um, but you don't know where it's gonna take you. So um, all the alumni that you're gonna see in the videos today all graduated from Norman. They didn't necessarily know where it was gonna take them when they graduated, um, but they are each preparing in their own ways for wherever their career is gonna take them. Some of them are professionals out in the field. Some of them are still in college um, learning how to be whatever it is they wanna be. Uh, but they're all here to share their own little bits of experiences with you and with the hopes that maybe that might inspire you, uh, if you're interested in the STEM fields, to keep up with it. And maybe if you haven't given STEM fields you know, uh, a fair shake, to recognize that these are all very different, very diverse people, and, and maybe not stereotypically the kind of people that you would think STEM would apply to. It, a lot of people can pursue STEM careers, and that likely includes you as well. So I hope you enjoy the presentation that we've got for you this year. Again, it's different, but that's the tagline for 2020. Oh, hey there. You just caught me in coming off a job site. My name is Charlie Blanco, and I'm a 2019 graduate of Norwin High School and a current student in civil engineering at Penn State University. Last summer, I was fortunate enough to work a civil engineering internship with Herbert Rallin and Grubick, where I got this cool safety vest and hard hat to come off construction sites like I just did. My advice for future engineers like yourself is find a career you like. There are so many options out there. Some people look into the future at what they're gonna have for a job and they get scared that it's gonna be difficult, it's just gonna be about a paycheck at the end of the day and that they're not gonna like what they do and only see it as work. That is not true at all. There are so many options out there for people who like to work desk jobs, computer jobs, work in a lab, work on a construction site like I did last summer. There's so much out there. I want you to take the time to find something you like and to enjoy a career that's truly fulfilling for you, something that you find really cool, just like I enjoy bridges and civil engineering, there's something out there for you, and I'm excited for you and your future in it. And with that, Norwin, keep your masks on. We'll see you soon. Stay safe. Hi, everybody. I am Jessica. I am a Norwin 2016 graduate. Um, since then, I got my undergraduate where I studied neuroscience and chemistry, and now I am in a master's of medical science program where I will start um, medical school in the fall. So my future advice, or my advice for a future medical professional is first make sure it's what you wanna do. Um, it's a lot of school and it's expensive, so make sure it's something you actually wanna do. Um, and my second piece of advice is that once you are um, Going to school, there are so many different paths you can take. Um, I did research, I worked in hospitals, and th that kind of experience really helped me figure out what I was good at and what I wanted to do um, long term. And my last piece of advice would just be find a good group of friends that are gonna be there to help you and support you. It is always so much easier when you have um, a whole team of people, a good support system, because can be stressful and it can be hard, but it is worth it. Um, so I hope to see you guys next year. See ya. My advice to a future engineer is to find the white space. What hasn't been thought of? What problems have we not realized we should solve? You can make a living improving what's already there. But to really make a difference in the world, leading engineers look for the proverbial white space. Realize too that you won't be able to solve it alone. To truly innovate, you need a diverse team around you. Purposefully seek out those who come from different backgrounds and have different opinions. Collectively, you will push boundaries beyond what you even thought possible.
Hey everyone, this is Jake Flaherty, and this is my submission to the 2020 Scaluda Conference for Mr. Anacol at Norman High School. Uh, a little about me, I'm Jake Flaherty, I'm a chemical engineer, Sherwin-Williams Paint Company, and I graduated from Norman in 2015. What you might know about me is that I'm Amelia Flaherty's big brother. So, she's a senior at the high school, you might know her, you might not. But, I uh, am here to give you some advice to any future engineers out there. Uh, my advice to you is if you want to do this, just go do it. It doesn't matter if you're the smartest person in AP Physics or AP Calc. I wasn't even in AP Calc. I wasn't even the smartest person in high school by a long shot. It doesn't matter. If you want to go do it, just go do it. And if you find a way to like it, that's all you're going to need because you're going to get hired by a company and you're going to like your job. And you know what? If you don't like engineering and you're an engineer already, it's fine. You can do something else. Companies like to see that you have an engineering degree. It, it means something good. But uh, anyway, I'm, I'm past my minute. So everyone, have a Merry Christmas from Greensboro, North Carolina, and stay safe out there. Hello, Norwin. My advice to future science majors is that it's okay if you don't know exactly what job you want or where you want to end up if you major in science. So here I am with my degree in chemistry and also library science, and I'm now working for a publishing company. So this is actually just a Zoom background behind me. I'm really just in my house in Pittsburgh. This was a remote job even before 2020, but this is the company headquarters in New York behind me. In my role, I run trainings and create resources for customers who are using our science and engineering databases. So high schools, universities, corporations across the US and around the world. And even though I am not working as a scientist, science has opened up so many doors for me and I've learned so many interesting things and gained really valuable skills and experiences throughout all my roles. So my advice is to just try things out, see what you find fascinating and exciting, and don't get discouraged if one part of science or if one career path just isn't clicking for you. There's really so much out there and you really never know where things will lead. So good luck. Hello, I'm Jessica Soa. I graduated from Norwin in 2006, um, and I am now a professor of biology at Westchester University. This is my lab where I use nematodes to study how viruses uh, are detected by the cells that they infect. Um, so my one minute elevator pitch for why you should consider a science career uh, is that you will never, never be bored. Uh, every day I get to come to work and find out something that nobody has ever known before in the history of human knowledge, uh, and that's just never gonna get old. Um, all right, you wanna look at some nematodes? All right, here's my super fancy microscope. Wow. Here's a plate that's got some nematodes on it. This is what I study. Well, let's take a look. There they are. Hello, my name is Ethan Whitaker, and I am currently enrolled in the University of Pittsburgh main campus as a prospective computer science major. My current advice to anyone who's interested in going to the technology slash math field is to try and get involved early. If you think that you want to do something with programming, like I am doing, try asking around, like ask your local church or someone that you know to see if they can learn, if you can learn uh, any programming languages or if you can just help around with computers around the house. Try and expand your mind so that you can be knowledgeable for the future. Um, and if you are interested in going to the math field, I recommend taking all different types of math so that you are prepared for whatever advanced math comes in the future. Hey everyone, my name is Leah Fru. I just graduated Norwin in 2020, and I am now a freshman mechanical engineering major at Robert Morse University. So in Norwin, I was heavily involved 
in the technology department along with Science Olympiad and I helped bring Sweet to the high school. And now, since I am at college, I am still a member of SWE, just at the collegiate level now. And the, my biggest advice so far is that you really have to go into all of your classes with an open mind. Because you may have a goal set, you may have an, a discipline that you think that you want to go into, but you can't just close yourself off. You, especially with engineering, there's so many different disciplines. Keep your options open and don't really limit what you can do. Hi everyone, my name is Isaac Anical and that bag there is Hope the Dog. I'm a former president of the Science Challenge Squad up at the high school and a current biology major and a creative writing minor at the University of Pittsburgh, which actually segues quite well to my advice for y'all today as a future STEM major. That is that I think it's super important to find passions outside of science and then apply them to your future career. In my case, I knew for a long time that I wanted to be a pediatric physical therapist which means that I really wanted to help out kids with physical therapy. I also discovered that I really enjoyed creative writing after I took a class up at the high school. So I decided to minor in creative writing once I got to college. So what's really important is I found a way to apply that to my future career as a physical therapist. And I discovered that the University of Pittsburgh offers a certificate in children's literature that I can obtain sort of while I'm getting my creative writing minor. So what I can do is I can channel my passion of creative writing. I can get a certificate in children's literature. And with that certificate, I should stand out in a sea of physical therapists as not only somebody who can help out children, but who can also write books for children. So whether your passion is creative writing, drawing, or maybe you're really good at soccer, I think it's important to embrace your passions and use them to stand out against everyone else in your field. I hope you all have an awesome holiday break, and I wish you good luck in your studies of any and every subject. See you guys. Hi, my name is Helena Ritchie. Um, I graduated from Norwin in 2016, and um, I just finished my bachelor's last spring in physics and astronomy and math at the University of Pittsburgh, and now I'm still at Pitt doing my or working on my PhD in physics, I'm hoping to eventually study astrophysics. So um, my advice to someone who wants to have a career in a science is to find something that you're really passionate about. And um, in whatever program you end up in, make sure that you find um, a support system that's really gonna work for you. So between students and um, faculty, don't be afraid to know what you're worth and to do what it takes to get um, opportunities that you deserve. And, definitely um, never turn down any opportunities. Um, so those are my main pieces of advice. And if you have any questions about physics or astronomy and careers in those areas, please feel free to contact me. Okay. Good luck. Hey, well, I hope you enjoyed those presentations. I had a lot of fun putting that together for you. A lot of great individuals with lots of great things to say. Um, uh, let me close up with a real quick comment. And I know it sometimes it feels like as a younger person that you maybe don't have a lot of influence on the bigger world around you. But let me assure you, the situation that we are in right now, that is not the case. Your smart decisions moving forward about how you spend your time and who you spend your time with can make a big difference combined with the smart actions of everybody else to help us get through these next difficult couple months. Yes, there are vaccines that have been developed. Yes, they are heading our way, but they are not here yet. And it's gonna be months and months and months before some of us see them. So we still have to maintain smart decisions about how we move forward with this. And your smart decisions to maybe play a game online with your friends instead of getting together with them, to maybe not hang out together at a restaurant, any of those decisions can help slow the transmission of the virus and maybe give a break to our medical professionals who are going to be putting in some really long hours over the next couple months. So I appreciate your diligence and vigilance as far as this goes. I know 2020 has asked an awful lot of you. And unfortunately, 2021 is going to do the same. 
But if we make smart decisions together as a community, we can help save some lives and make the medical professionals' jobs a little bit easier. Uh, thanks again for your time. Stay safe, wear your masks, and happy 2021. Thank you.